Dear colleagues, this time in BG Dental case, we will do a review of clinical situations with subgingival defects and restorations by full crowns. We will talk about retraction and intraoral scanning. Hello, dear colleagues and friends. We are back in our YouTube channel with our series of uh, dental cases reviews and this time we will show you a very interesting clinical situation with subgingival defects and full crowns and we will discuss with you some tips and tricks related to retraction and uh, intraoral scanning as well. Uh, as our good tradition this clinical case is dedicated to our online program online masterclass about protocols of full crown preparations for posterior teeth. So you can see that program, you can attend our online masterclass and uh, learn a lot of clinical tips and tricks and protocols from A to Z, how to prep teeth for Emax crowns, for zirconia crowns in posterior uh, areas. You can see the link to the online masterclass in descriptions under this video. Okay, so let me show you uh, initial situation. Here you can see two uh, molar teeth, uh, endodontically treated, pretty much affected by carious defects and old restorations. So I can say that, um, actually it is visible that this one, the first molar, is absolutely composite. More than 80% of tooth was restored by composite material and also there was a secondary carious underneath, so after preparation there was a pretty disaster. Uh, regarding adjacent tooth, the second molar, it is, it looks like not that much, but if we will take into consideration the curious defect and also necessity to do root canal treatment because it is pul pul it was pulpitis or periodontitis, I don't remember exactly, we ended up with pretty big defect with the very thin walls. So we decided to do full coverage to reinforce that to that couple of teeth uh, and that was our choice actually. Okay, let me show you after preparation. This is the, the intro oral picture after preparation. But I would like to point a few interesting things about forced molar. Here you can see intro oral scan and from this occlusal view it is visible that the defects from distal and mesial side of this first molar was pretty, pretty deep. But if I will show you uh, a video of, from the intraoral scanner, you will see exact problem. You can see exact depth of this subgingival defect. It was pretty deep. Deep as hell, we used to say deep as hell from mesial and also from the distal side of the first molar. From the mesial side of the second molar was not also very superficial. It was also deep but not that deep as on the first molar. So let me just give you a few options. How can we actually, how can we manage this type of subgingival defects? We have plenty of options. Dentistry is very interesting discipline because we don't have exact one option to treat um, a situation, let's say. We have plenty of options and sometimes we may use combination of these options. So let me just count uh, a few of them. So the first option is to do crown lengthening, okay? The second option is to do orthodontic extrusion. The third option is to do let's say a fancy or modern approach like deep marginal elevation so basically we can restore that subgingival defect with composite uh, to fit composite perfectly with a special metric systems and then we can prep and keep our preparation in composite partially somewhere. Uh, another option is just to do classic preparation and to reach sound to structures Another option is to do vertical preparation like vertiprep or BOPT concept and the, another option is just extraction and implant. Okay, so we, decide, we discussed actually with our patient 
few of these options and we decided to go for the classic approach and uh, uh, it was not so easy to prep to be honest but it was also not so easy to scan or to take impression because for this case we also took an impression if you will say if you will ask myself why did I take impression having pretty nice intraoral scanner and scan as, as well I can say that sometimes we do just partial partial impressions to fabricate a quick control model just to check intra, um, interdental uh, contacts and also in this case uh, having that deep defect I didn't have to be honest uh, I didn't have a lot of experience with scanning in such a clinical situations and to be honest I did not trust yet that much my intraoral scanner in such deep defects Sometimes it is difficult to take an impression to, be, to, to, to get it pretty nice and uh, precise. But what about intraoral scanner in such a de defect? So I tested both impression and intraoral scanner. When you do impression in such cases, you can, also, you can have some advantage from the impression material because there is some certain pressure when you have your light body or heavy body, let's say, and you have your actually body or, 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 or medium body forcing your light body into the narrow spaces but for intraoral scanner there is no force intraoral scanner scans what is visible so you have to do your retraction this is the, the, the slight difference between scanning and impression for scanning in such a cases you will have to have better and more aggressive retraction and let me give you some tips regarding um, uh, preparation and also regarding retraction that I use in that case. So first, when I reached the gum level during preparation, I took uh, fine grit burrs and I used electric motor and increasing handpiece and the speed was about 50 or 60,000 RPM. When you use electric motor and increasing handpiece and you use fine grid burr and you touch gum somewhere it will not bleed that much as it may bleed when you work with turbine or with high speed or with a uh, coarse burrs so the first tip is to use electric motor and to use fine grid burrs okay definitely your gingiva in such deep defects may bleed because your burr will touch the, the, the gingiva but it will it will be not barbecue effect so we went to the sound to structure with our preparation and I would like to say also that it was very difficult to prep distal and also mesial aspect of this defect uh, without mirror so basically I don't know how can you see that deep distal defect especially distal lingual margin without mirror and if you want to learn the technique how to work with mirror preparing posterior teeth during our online masterclass that will be about crown preparation for posterior teeth I will show you some practical tips how to hold, handle your mirror, how to handle your burr and how to actually handle both and to work simultaneously with mirror and with your burr in posterior teeth. Uh, so red burr, electric motor. We went down then we took electrosurge. I made electrosurgery to expose these margins because there were some gums around my finish lines, some bleeding or whatever so I took electrosurgery and then I put my retraction cord. This retraction cord, the green one, is very nice for intraoral scanners, by the way. And the one that I use is, uh, I mean, the scanner that I use is Prime Scan by Sirona. And this retraction cord, because I, I know that you, you will ask uh, these questions in the comments, uh, the retraction cord is triple zero by Sure, uh, Sure, Sure Cord, I think, from Korea. Okay, so I put retraction, uh, I made re um, electrosurgery, then I put retraction cord, but also it was a little moisture inside and I was not able to scan. You, when you scan, it has to be dry. When you take impression, it has to be dry. So I used additive retraction. I used retraction paste. So I just fill all these areas with retraction paste, the one from 3M. Keep it for a few minutes and actually this retraction paste gave me very dry 
filled and also it gave me a little bit horizontal uh, retraction, a little bit of the horizontal retraction and I had a few minutes to scan. So the sequence was, once I rinsed out uh, retraction paste, I took intraoral scanner and I scanned. Okay, and then I took impression. So that is that was uh, a sequence. And uh, by the way, I would like to ask you guys uh, to share in comments your tips and tricks or your secrets of retraction in such uh, or similar clinical situations. Because I want the, our audience to benefit not just by my content, but also reading comments and uh, getting some nice practical advices by you guys. Okay, so next. Uh, impression as you see here uh, and then we uh, made cast control model let me just show you the the, the cast model here uh, this is the part from dental lab here you can see design of Emacs they are full contour Emacs crowns and uh, here you can see crowns on the uh, control model and I filmed a video I'm fi I filmed the video about dry fit control on the uh, the plaster model on, on, on the cast model you can see uh, the exposed margins and uh, you'll be able now to see with a high magnification this video was filmed from the microscope so you can see actually how a crown fits to pretty deep margins. Uh, I was actually amazed because the restorations were made out of scans. So basically scanner was able to scan deep defects and at the same time to give precision. I was uh, really amazed because I didn't have as I said before, a lot of experience with that sub defects and intraoral scans and, uh, and crowns or, or other types of restorations done in digital uh, protocol. But now I'm pretty confident. I know that scan can scan actually sub defects and it can give you really nice and smooth and precise uh, margins. But you have to prep well, you have to retract well, you have to work with dry field and you have to scan in proper algorithm let's say to be able to to give your dental technician or to yourself if you do your restorations by yourself like chair side restorations for example so here you can see uh, restorations after boning and uh, the next appointment actually we didn't have enough time to to to, to make a treatment of the premolars so we decided to do a next appointment treatment of these premolars patient came we made preparations, uh, took out caries defects, we made some interesting uh, vestibular access preparations to some of the caries defects class 2. This way uh, we preserved um, mesial ridge which is important from the biomechanical perspective and uh, here you actually can see the final result after composite restoration before and after uh, sorry, it's not before and after, it is uh, straight away, straight um, after uh, polishing of the composite restoration. So basically, in this case, we combined direct and indirect restorations using ceramic crowns and composite direct restorations in the same patients. I hope that you got some tips and tricks, that you enjoy the clinical case, and uh, if you want to learn more about crown preparations, just follow the link under that video and you'll be able to attend our online masterclass. And uh, for the rest, I would like to wish you to be healthy and may the dental force be with you guys. See you next time.